and welcome to St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. For your safety, we ask you to abstain from moving chairs. Please sit only where you're instructed by the ushers, even if you're seated away from your family. Moving chairs negates social distancing. Please follow the directions of the ushers at communion distribution. The host will only be placed in the hand, not on the tongue. Communion should not be received with gloves on or in a napkin. Please consume communion immediately after you receive it, then head back to your seat. Thank you for your cooperation. Following these mask and social distancing requirements will allow us to safely continue to hold masks. Thank you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. You know, we think in terms of uh, Advent as having so much, it's so rich in, in its uh, content, you know, preparing for the second coming of the Lord, uh, getting ourselves in a proper disposition to celebrate his coming at Christmas, and, uh, and then inviting him to be present to us even now. Um, but what I'd like you to do is to imagine yourself um, as a captive in Babylon 500 years before Christ was born, um, to see uh, suddenly, unexpectedly, that you've been released from captivity, probably born in Babylon, never having experienced Jerusalem or Judea at all, and now you're heading back and you're, you're going back filled with that uh, expectation of being a pioneer to restore uh, the nation of old. And then, and uh, coupled with that, is the, is the tremendous patience of the faithful remnant of Israel looking for the son of David, the Messiah, the coming, the promise of God, uh, with the tremendous patience, of course, that would be for those people 500 years. And so the next generation to lay something, uh, a foundation, for others. So to imagine yourself in that situation, what it must have been like, and try to embrace their virtue, their strength, uh, their patience, and, and, and their faith. Um, uh, today the uh, prophet Isaiah speaks to us of this in chapter 40, but he begins by saying, give a word of comfort to my people. God commands the prophet. So may, uh, as I need some comfort in these troubled times, May you too uh, find comfort in our God. Lord Jesus, the prophets foretold your coming. Lord, have mercy. John the Baptist prepared the way. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in power and glory. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on to a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. So John comes out of the desert quite surprisingly. He appears, uh, and here he is. And he's, uh, he's given us the what for and the how to. And so um, he, he is uh, very reminiscent of the Old Testament prophets. And he's been given that title as the last of the Old Testament prophets, addressed like Elijah. You remember Elijah? Elijah was a firebrand. He was not somebody to trifle with. He uh, was faithful to the Lord, and he would countenance no compromise. And he dressed in a similar way to uh, John with his uh, leather belt and eating locusts and honey and his camel hair clothes. Um, John, um, uh, in many ways, is the fulfillment of uh, what was expected of a great prophet to come, that uh, of Moses and Elijah. Um, he was very much in line with the prophecies of Isaiah and Malachi and, and, and Exodus. And so John is um, uh, in the lineage of all these Old Testament figures, but greater than they, because his task is more prominent, that is, to prepare the way for the promised Messiah, not only the promised Messiah, but as you heard in the gospel today, the Son of God. And so to prepare the way for the people, prepare the way in their hearts. So um, John the Baptist, like his Old Testament pro pro predecessors, was a person of communion with God. Probably, I mean... I don't know, just thinking about it. Probably, if he was living today, he probably wouldn't be your friend on Facebook. He certainly wouldn't be one of the 37,000 followers of some celebrity on Twitter. So he was a guy that knew how to commune with God, to stay in quiet and reflect and be at peace and have communion with God undisturbed in the deserts and through the mountains. So John preaches repentance, and the people acknowledge their sins. Acknowledging our sins is not that easy anymore. You know, we kind of relative, aren't we? You know, well, I, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not as bad as those other guys. I mean, look at all those people on the front page of the newspaper or in the TV um, news reports. You know, people burning down buildings and throwing over signs, uh, kicking people while they're down. I mean, I didn't even believe they can show us those videos, but they do. Uh, we have examples of criminals and killers and perverts. Um, you know, I think m often with anger about Harvey Weinstein and all his surrounding support system has not been exposed. And, and of course, we can just look at the Hollywood scandals, except they're not scandalous anymore because we've accepted this uh, decadent way of life. Um, and, and so um, we can kind of compromise our own failings by comparing ourselves to others. Then there are our relatives who have absented themselves from Sunday worship. So it is very easy to justify our behavior on a relative basis. It is easy to rationalize our behavior in the, in, in the darkness of our own mind as well. 
um, alone with our thoughts, not even acknowledging our failings. People often won't admit their sins to themselves, let alone to someone else. If you can remember in your life a time that you have felt heartfelt sorrow for something that you had done wrong, perhaps before God or um, in the confessional or before another, where you were really filled with a sense that, you know, this was my fault and I did wrong. You are very fortunate indeed. Um, but more common is that we'll say to ourselves, well, I didn't hurt anyone or didn't mean to, or, you know, my favorite thing to talk about, my, not my favorite thing to do, is the old celebrity apology, which is not an apology at all. Well, I'm sorry that some people were offended. So if so-and-so hadn't done this to, to me, um, I wouldn't have done it to him or her. And the great refrain from the musical Chicago, um, they had it coming. It's all about um, uh, women murderers who had killed their lovers and their husbands. <laughs> they had it coming. So um, that's not the way to be in terms of our Christian faith. Uh, and we don't even want to sink down to Frank Sinatra's level of I did it my way. Um, you know, we need to find something better than that. And so Pope Benedict has, has made mention of the dictatorship of relativism um, where everyone determines for themselves what is wrong, right and wrong. So how's that working out? Everybody defining what's right and wrong for themselves. How's that working out uh, on, on our city streets or <clears throat> in relationships with nations and difficulties with conflicting religions in foreign countries? Uh, how's that working out in terms of our trust of one another and how we feel about one another? How's it, how's it working out when everybody uh, can determine what is right for them and ultimately that comes down to a will to power and dominance over others? Um, the, the sense of having a greater authority in our lives, a God to whom we are responsible and being sorry for our sins before him. So the dictatorship of relativism um, often demands before the civil law that you can't even criticize another who is uh, in failing in their life. Your truth is not their truth. Who are you to say anything? Uh, and the prophet is left gagged by the culture of death. Ideology becomes a substitute for science, and faith and reason are lost as we are only left with this will to power. Acknowledging our sin is necessary in order to fulfill the command of John the Baptist. And then repentance takes us a step further, acknowledging that we could do better and to change our lives in some positive way. So repentance implies change, to change your direction. Going your way? No, now let's go God's way, to change your ways. St. Peter adds even more urgency. The Lord does not delay. You should not delay. Peter, too, calls you to repentance and asks the question, what sort of person ought you to be? You are to conduct yourself in holiness and devotion. Can you say that about yourself? Holiness, to be different from the world, that is different from our culture. To be devoted, dedicated to God in prayer, worship, and life choices. Is that, and can we say that is, that is ourselves? <clears throat> now, many of us have problems that are very obvious, and, um, and those problems, you know, pornography, drunkenness, laziness, gambling, greed, you may have some issue that you're really dealing with. But other, others, um, perhaps, like I've said at the beginning, are living a pretty good life, um, but stand indifferently as others abandon God and make terrible choices. So I can tell you that the message to repent, the message to confess our sins is for everyone. In one of our interviews, Mo Mother Teresa was asked uh, by the uh, uh, reporter, um, if she went to confession, she responded every week. The reporter said, why would you go every week? And Mother Teresa says, because I sin. And uh, the reporter says, it must be a very harsh God that you serve if he demands that you confess your sins every week. Uh, and Mother Teresa responded, well, if your young daughter came to you and admitted she had done something bad, would you not take her in your arms and forgive her and then console her and make her feel better? So it is with me and God, with me and God in confession. 
Mother Teresa. Great. The prophet Isaiah makes a similar point today. Comfort, give comfort to my people who have sinned. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock in his arms. He gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading them home with care. Comfort, give comfort to my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Her guilt is expiated. Like peace, the comfort of God has nothing to do with denial or chosen ignorance. It certainly does not rely on the repeated lie to obscure reality. E even hidden in claims in the name of science, which is not science. After all, human life does begin in the womb. That's true science. God's comfort does come in the forgiveness of sin, the sin that is admitted and taken responsibility for. God's comfort comes with divine grace strengthening us to do the right thing in our personal lives and in confronting evil. God's comfort comes when he strengthens us, that is, makes us men and women of virtue. God's comfort comes when I realize that my life and the way I live has a purpose. But at the same time, I am only a sojourner, a stranger in a strange land, having no permanent home here, a traveler destined for the heavenly Jerusalem, the city on the hill. Comfort with a hope that may not see with human clarity the triumph of the king, his defeat of the enemies, but nevertheless vanquished in our life and in the life to come. The kings of kings is, is triumphant nonetheless, and the fullness of joy promised in the scriptures is already and not yet. God's comfort comes to us in prayer. What has been called nothing more or less than friendship with God. Prayer to prayer is not an escape from reality, but engagement in the ultimate reality, entry into eternity from the beginning to the end with the only true subject, our Creator God. God's comfort comes in the confessional as we are relieved of the burden of our guilt, that our shame is, is washed away. God's comfort comes in the Eucharist as we are fed um, by the body of Christ our Savior. So we are sinners, admitting this is a prelude to change, to repentance. And, and so why don't we um, uh, do that? Why don't we, first of all, just tell God and, and ask for his forgiveness? You know what the um, Jesuits would say, an exam and a wonderful thing to integrate into your spiritual life daily to say, you know, God, uh, give glory to God, that God has blessed me in this way with his graces. These are the good things I've done today, and this is where I've failed. Um, to be able to look at our life in, in a way and to s receive the forgiveness of God. But then to move beyond that, to move beyond that into the sacrament, the very presence of Christ in, in our lives. Matthew 18, 20 says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst, not alone, but with another. And again in John 20, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. And James 5, declare your sins to one another. And so we have brought this great scriptures together with the teaching of the church and the obligation and discipline and command known as the seal of confession to make this all uh, 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 able for us to actually bring forth the commands uh, of the scripture into our life. John the Baptist insisted on honesty, admission of sin, and change of heart. You know, nothing different than Peter or Mary Magdalene or Augustine or Thomas Beckett or Mother Teresa. And then forgiveness would be ours. Jesus proclaimed forgiveness of sins, the power of which brought about a change of life, repentance. That's victory to the saints, disciples, believers, and you and me. Now you and I prepare to celebrate the Savior's birth and entry into the fullness of his mission. We prepare for the triumphant return of our, our, our Savior in glory, even as he is here with us, gathered in his name. And that is truly comfort. Please rise. <clears throat> Let's respond in faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, seeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Through the season of Advent, we bring our prayers before God in hope, even as we repent. That the leaders of the church may repent of their past failures with regard to the sexual scandal, especially with regard to Cardinal McCarrick, ensuring the promotion of moral clergy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, that they govern in integrity, protect the innocent, confront evil, live under the authority of God, and abide by their own restrictions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of God, may our lives proclaim the good news of Christ while preparing the way for his coming at Christmas, at the end, and even now, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Northwest and California may be refreshed with snow and rain, bringing forth life and renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That way we may all be patient before the unfolding plan of God as we look toward the end of the COVID plague. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are working to overcome the secular assault on the holy in this season of preparation, may they bring forth the, the divine in the hearts of humanity unto the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, sick, hurt pre-born children and those near death, that they may feel the consoling presence of the one who has come and will return in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the exposure of political and entertainment leaders and their misuse of power for sexual exploitation, that they may be led to a greater awareness of morality and live it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bob and Mary Klinger, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may know the comfort of the God of Israel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, as we prepare for your Son's return in glory and are strengthened by his presence in this Eucharist, hear us that we may hasten his coming, in whose name we pray, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his divinity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Mother Teresa, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our, our Pope, and, and Gerald, our, our Bishop, Alberto, our coadjutor, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. One heart and one mind, let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, and as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Lamb of God, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. So we've got a special guest here today who was, wasn't a guest uh, some years back. Um, this is Michael Sequeira, and she was, grew up here. I think she came when she was nine, nine years old, and now she's kind of all grown up. So anyway, she's got a couple of words for us. Thank you, Monsignor. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Sequeira. Um, me and my family were, as Father said, longtime parishioners until their recent move to Arizona um, last summer. This past April, I graduated from the University of Mary in North Dakota and began, began my life as a focused missionary at the University of Southern California. Fight on. I'd like to start off by asking you a question to think about. How many of you know someone, a daughter, a grandson, a brother, or another loved one, who is raised in the faith but no longer practices? I can bring to mind people in my own life, and I imagine you can do the same. If your loved one is like a majority of fallen away Catholics, it is likely their crisis of faith occurred in their college years. Of those who leave the Catholic Church, nearly 80% will do so by the time they turn 23. As exciting as college is, it's also a very difficult time. We've all heard the stories and seen the alarming statistics about drugs, alcohol, depression, eating disorders, abuse, abortion, and suicide. In the season of life, young adults are wrestling with the big questions and making decisions about their identity, spiritual beliefs, and their calling in life. The Catholic Church needs a dynamic, attractive presence on college campus, perhaps now more than ever. There's good news. There's an organization that is doing something about it, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, or FOCUS. Myself and over 800 missionaries have been working hard this past semester on, at over 170 campuses across the nation and in Europe to introduce the students to Jesus Christ. These students we've been meeting have been doing amazing things, like inviting friends back to Mass for the first time, receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation after years of not going, getting married in the church, raising the next generation of faithful Catholics, and discerning religious and priestly vocations. These college students have been captivated by the idea that God has an amazing plan for their lives. I have also been convinced that God has called me to do something so much greater with my life and has an amazing plan for me. I am so grateful that during my time at the University of Mary, I had a focused missionary reach out to me and guide me through the tough landscape that was college. Without her consistency and friendship, I wouldn't be standing here today. She pushed me to be my best self and how to center my life on Christ. I pray that I will be a light to the girls I am already serving and to the future students I serve. Just like Jesus and his disciples went out sharing the gospel while living off the support of others, I have the blessing of doing the same. To continue to be his hands and feet, I need to become fully funded. As a missionary, I am responsible for fundraising 100% of my salary and missionary budget with the help of individuals like you. I cannot do the work of God that God has called me to without your partnership. Please consider joining my monthly support team with a financial donation and prayer. By supporting me, you're not just donating, donating money. You're actually joining me on this mission to build up our future leaders, doctors, lawyers, teachers, musicians, politicians, to change the world for Christ and save a generation. St. Therese of Lisieux once said, some give by going to the missions, some go by giving to the missions. Without both, there would be no mission. I will be at the, at the back to collect um, contact information to set up an appointment to speak to you further about this mission work as well as my particular call. The need is great, now all I need are great people to fill the need. I look forward to talking with you all and thank you for your time. May God bless you. Thank you, Monsignor. One of those additional great blessings of the COVID-19 is um, that when you sign up back there, you can just take the pen with you. So we're not, we're not sanitizing them all like they do at the sign-in at the doctor's office. You just, and it is a Mother Teresa pen, so uh, feel free to take that with you. Um, this, to do take a bulletin as well, and um, we have a lot of information in there that I'm going to go through a little bit here. Um, this Tuesday is uh, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Um, it's a holy day of obligation, but of course, like Sunday, we've been um, released from that obligation. However, we do have four Masses, and so we hope that you will be able to be a part of it. This is our national patroness. Um, Mary, under the title of Immaculate Conception, is the 
the patroness of the United States of America. So uh, Monday we have a 6.30 English Mass, 6.30 p.m., that's the vigil. Tuesday we have the normal 8.30 uh, a.m. Uh, daily Mass in English, 5.30 p.m. Spanish, and 7 p.m. Vietnamese. Um, we um, would like to um, uh, thank all those who are participating via live stream and know that we are going to be here from uh, 1 on to uh, 1.30 to distribute communion after the 12 o'clock Mass. So um, if you would like to receive the Eucharist, please come forward then. Um, this week we also have the Hispanic Ministry of St. Mother Teresa inviting you to particip participate in a novena um, Monday through Thursday. Please uh, join us for outdoor rosaries at 6.30 p.m. Um, and um, there is details on all of this in the, in, in the bulletin and online. On Friday, um, Bishop Alberto Rojas will be here for the celebration of the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. For any of you who have participated in that in the past, you know how hospitable the Spanish ministry has been. We have multiple languages, uh, translations, um, uh, some of it's in English. But this year, because of the limits of COVID and only 100 people, the celebration is going to be totally in Spanish. Um, Bishop Rojas being a native speaker is going to be a great blessing for our Spanish-speaking community. Um, so um, there will be many spots that are taken in that 100, but there is a lottery. If you think that you would like to participate in that celebration, just go online. Um, also, the next morning, we're also having uh, Mañanitas and a Mass of Our Lady of Guadalupe at 6 a.m. Okay, I think that's it. Um, so uh, Michael is um, looking forward to um, seeing you in the back. Um, please take some time to uh, thank her and, um, and uh, if you so choose to be part of her support team. Um, please rise. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is endless. Go in the peace and the love of Christ. And I didn't mention, of course, that the people up front have the extra bonus of being able to pray for the rest of us as the ushers usher out the people in the back.